Nordic occultism is divided into two categories, uh, Dollar and Seder. Seder is what I will be talking about for this video. Seder is actually an umbrella term covering several practices. This isn't clear, but for my money, it covers certain divinations including necromancy types of inward meditations. Um, even uh, two that we know of are called Utsasera, which means sitting out or out sitting. Uh, and uh, Hagasera, which if I said that correctly, it means mound sitting or uh, sitting on top of a ancestral burial mound or even just a where, pe where people uh, have been buried. Uh, and this is uh, in the effort to contact spirits of the dead or spirits of one's ancestors. So, Seder is a spirit and inner work of all kinds, basically. Um, it seems to involve the most is shamanic journey uh, as the main thing. The New Age community refers to this as either astral projection, out-of-body experience, remote viewing, astral vision, Seder. Seder is shamanic in nature. Uh, its origins are not quite clear, but according to the story, Odin learned the art from the goddess Freya. Odin being the magical seeker he is, is not satisfied with uh, what he knows. He's always trying to expand upon his knowledge and uh, learn something new. I believe Seder was a a practice that the North Germanic peoples adopted from the Sami, either through integration of the cultures or in some other way. Others believe it's the surviving elements of our earliest practices. Being shamanic, I believe this to be true, when the Indo-Europeans, more specifically the Germanic peoples, uh, migrated into Europe uh, some 5,000 or so years ago or so. Uh, about a, uh, they were actually the second uh, Indo-European people to arrive into Europe, uh, the first being the Celts. Uh, <coughs> they may or may not have had shamanism as part of their religious practice. We know that they brought polytheism uh, uh, and the Bronze Age as nearly as they brought that. Uh, they brought those two things nearly everywhere they went. They may have also brought, uh, introduced horse domestication and wine fermentation also. But when they arrived, they eventually merged with the cultures who were already here. Now, those folks more than likely had shaman shamanism and animism as their base religions going, uh, just as their ancestors did. Now, uh, those people were the last, would have been the last of uh, uh, Europe's Neolithic, Neolithic cultures, or uh, New Stone Age uh, people. Um, now, we believe that, uh, we can't, I'm not sure we can quite call them native to Europe, but we believe they uh, came from the merging of, uh, another merging uh, long before them, of uh, the last of Neanderthal peoples and uh, Cro-Magnon people. Now we both know from archaeo- we all know from archaeology that both of those uh, people had shamanism and animism as, as part of their religious practices. Not a leap of the imagination that uh, uh, shamanism would survive into the modern era uh, in the form of what we call Seder. Uh, I'm going to focus on the shamanic journey part. Because this is spirit work, we are dealing with the manipulation of one's haminga, uh, or spirit energy, spirit body, soul, astral body, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. The idea is that it separates from the like, the physical body, and can travel different realms of existence, different times, different places. Even seeing through the eyes of one's spirit animal or philia, uh, which is one's animal familiar, this is a this is an area where uh, shape shifting kind of comes into the picture. It wasn't just the vulva uh, who practiced satyr. It was because uh, many of us are aware of uh, whom were called the berserkers, and I'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. The altered state of consciousness is where satyr begins. 
There are many theories about how the Berserkers achieve this or how the Volva went into trance, but the truth is we don't know because there are dozens if not hundreds of ways to do, to do this. Some people fast for prolonged periods, others expose themselves to extreme or adverse circumstances, repetitive drumming, rattling, rasping, tapping one's staff onto a rock repeatedly, focusing on one's heartbeats, uh, breath, I can go on and on. Anyone can do it. It's, it all begins with focus and relaxation, and that's why meditation is a part of the puzzle, as is visualization and uh, breath work. Uh, we have a thing called Vardlocker, which is a type of song which that is uh, used to help facilitate the altered state in which the Haminga can separate from the light. Um, some say this has nothing to do with Galder. Uh, uh, that's debatable. I disagree with that just a little bit. Galder is a, a magic that resonates outward and can help create the conditions for Seder. Uh, a Vardlocker is uh, maybe slightly different, uh, but it's a song that resonates more inward to facilitate the Seder in the altered state one needs to experience. It doesn't seem to be a song that uh, you've composed yourself or that a galder, that, like a galder, that you've composed yourself. It's more something that you've received from the spirit world to a kind of a, uh, it's like a, I think it's like a spirit, uh, like a, your direct line to the spirit world, I guess you could say. Uh, spirit enhancer, so to speak, uh, so that you can slip into the state that's necessary so that you can uh, have your shamanic journey. That's not something you've made yourself. It's something that you've uh, been given. Uh, th that's what it's believed. Now, if Ariel Bolviker is watching, he might be a little perplexed because part of my issue is that I've had quite a bit of trouble with this type of work as of late uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, thus being a part of why he and I did business in the first place. He's an excellent guy. We access the spirit realms in different ways than just through um, meditation uh, or uh, you know, getting into a trance state. Some people like myself uh, have been most successful achieving the separation in the dream state, uh, more specifically lucid dreaming. Uh, as the New Age community likes to call it, uh, because one is aware they are dreaming. For me, it's usually when I become fully aware, and then <coughs> you still your body's still asleep, but you're lucid enough. Uh, physical sensations in the dream become real. Uh, your senses, uh, as if feeling and seeing them all with your own body, so to speak. And that's usually when uh, <coughs> the the haminga separates from the uh, from the light. Um, one particular time this occurred, I felt myself. It was a lucid dream, right? Uh, I felt myself lift off the ground, literally felt, and the feeling of fear. So it's those intuitive uh, feelings uh, uh, also that are a factor. That feeling of fear being lifted off the ground like that is what brought me down. <coughs> However, the sensation was so strong, I just let go and next thing I know, it was a like kind of like a total whiteout. And I'm walking, next thing I'm, I'm in this uh, restaurant or a lo lounge, it was a really nice place now. It was early in the morning, real early, before sunrise. Uh, now, I'm seeing a friend, well, an acquaintance, uh, and he uh, he's having breakfast or something with a bunch of people. Now, when I told him of this experience the next, the following afternoon, uh, he confirmed to me that this is indeed what he was doing, where he was, and uh, what I was seeing. Uh, uh, he was pretty surprised by it, kind of shocked. Uh, I mean, I wasn't spying on him or intentionally doing that. Although some people, when they project like that, um, probably do just that and uh, 
I don't think it's good business to go do that. Or, <coughs> you know, could be asking for a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, but in another experience, I encountered uh, some animals. Uh, moose and black bears, actually, um, doing whatever moose and black bears do. Now, this is a dream state, uh, and this dream is clearly a manifestation of uh, life around here. Uh, I was actually in my sister-in-law's neighborhood, and in her yard even. I was with my wife and son in this dream, and a lot of uh, open, uh, uh, thick bush around here. So there's there's a lot of moose and black bear uh, hanging around here all the time. Uh, but anyway, uh, in my sister-in-law's yard, I happened to catch this one, one black bear just uh, staring dead right at me. And he notices. Uh, because I noticed him, he stood up and began walking uh, toward towards me, but past me. And as he was getting closer, he uh, was taking on a more human form. And, Wanting to know what this was, um, I mean, I was becoming more and more lucid, uh, more and more aware. I, by this time, I knew I was dreaming, but I'm aware that something's happening. That's how you know that having a lucid dream, but uh, when you're, the greater your awareness becomes, the more uh, it wants to move out of that lucid dream state into a, a projection or a, uh, when you're... Uh, your consciousness wants to leave your body it's being transferred into a different uh, a different realm of existence and that's how Sailor basically begins anyway um, now I uh, wanted to know what this was uh, so I followed him but I lost him in this group of people it was a circle of people now you can kind of get the uh, idea of what's going on here and I uh, these were friendly faces, nonchalant. Uh, they wanted giving off the, the impression that there was nothing to worry about. Uh, well, and there was a reason for that. Uh, to me, this was an encounter with a shapeshifter who didn't want me to know his identity and uh, was watching me. Probably, maybe still is for whatever reason. Uh, that's my belief anyway. Um, uh, dreams aside, the soul. Uh, the soul body will do what it wants sometimes. Uh, uh, when a person's light is down and out for the evening, and during this kind of journey, we often come into contact with uh, otherworldly beings and departed souls, uh, animal spirits, ancestors, etc. We can communicate with them, gather their knowledge, even assist, even assist them in certain ways. Because we are dealing with soul energy, we have the potential to both heal, harm, merge with other energies, take on certain ailments that another's body can't fight, sometimes transfer ailments into non-living objects or beings, even temporarily uh, acquiring the powers of certain spirits. And the magic of Seder seems to be what we bring back with us uh, when we come out of it S sometimes be it occult knowledge sigils information like the like the prophecies of the uh the vulva from uh, eric the red saga or basically when we come out of other worlds sometimes uh we'll be gifted with a little something uh, or a little favor that we might ask i'll use the berserkers as an example <coughs> regardless of however they uh, enter the trance state what I believe they had done was acquired temporarily the strength and the ferocity of bear and wolves through uh, this type of means. Um, and, uh, you know, some people might debate that. I, like I said, uh, it's not really clear what or how uh, or why they needed to do this. How to facilitate Galler, I think, uh, Seder, I think one has to first be able to see and view into the spirit world in some form or another. Some people use uh, 
a henbane muscaria tonic but I don't know enough about that to recommend it to anyone what I did I simply got sick of all the meditation new age crap that I was drowning in and so I expanded upon the meditations with visualization in, uh, in different ways than people were feeding me literally misleading me into some occultists will do that to you <coughs> and I need to talk about that some more uh, in the future but once I did this the channels opened up more and my focus became sharper uh, um, then when I learned about the art of Galder uh, and how one can create changes in one's environment and make a, it a little more sailor friendly i.e. assistance by reading ridding oneself of negative energies, uh, bringing harmony to one's home, eliminating doubt, changes in one's environment, um, <coughs> uh, eliminating doubt and self-detriment, improving focus, you name it. Runes too, especially the raid rune. Uh, the galder of that rune alone is, help, is helpful enough uh, getting into a, uh, a trance state. One could add to this with drumming or some other method. Once the trance state is achieved, it's simply a matter of focus, to me anyway, but more importantly, patience. There are those who have been doing this for a long time and are uh, much better at it than I am, uh, but from what I keep hearing on average is that even for them, uh, half the time they won't be able to achieve this the shamanic journey. Uh, modern science kind of recognizes the uh, uh, brain brain waves and the frequencies of them uh, how we can get into altered states uh, and this is this this is their way of explaining how we can get into different states of consciousness we got the uh, alpha state which is our super conscious uh, and uh, that's how we can perceive the uh, the spirit world in real time and greater aspects of reality um, and then next is the beta state. Uh, beta waves is, is where we keep our minds the majority of the time. Um, and uh, from there we can uh, access alpha, uh, which for some may be a bit, little bit easier. But, uh, and it may be a little bit harder for some to access the next one, which is the theta state. And... Uh, the theta state is uh, where we are lucid enough, we're still uh, somewhat conscious uh, to perceive the conscious reality and then the subconscious reality and even the, uh, uh, the subconscious reality which is uh, basically what theta is uh, and uh, it's where they're kind of reconciled and we become lucid enough in this state to actually uh, experience soul travel or uh, a shamanic journey and whatnot. And the one beneath it is delta, which is the unconscious state or the deep, uh, deep, deep, deep unconscious. Uh, and because theta is kind of right, right in between, uh, that's where uh, this type of work uh, yeah, yeah, that allows so. one to be able to experience from multiple aspects of reality. Uh, it also uh, helps to explain how some people can uh, actually achieve this uh, achieve the shamanic journey from the dreaming state for some people that might be more difficult for others it might be more difficult to uh, achieve from the conscious state uh, I've had difficulty with both uh, ease with both and uh, it's uh, it's work that you just got to work with uh, try to find ways to uh, get in and out of it uh, uh, that work for you that are easier and it gets easier with time it really does but it's all about pa uh, patience and practice all of that is still scratching the surface um, but when it comes to Seder uh, I got so sick of a uh, I like to do a lot of research even some pointless research here and there so uh, if I go on YouTube I, if I wanted to research Seder a little bit Nobody really goes into it in depth, or, or they can kind of confine what they know to the myths, and that drove me nuts. And that's part of the reason why I'm making this video. 
Um, so I hope some of you uh, will have found this informative. Um, I just want to say thank you to uh, Sega Manning for uh, uh, how she's helped me with this type of work. Uh, uh, I respect fully that she's uh, spirituality for her has taken on a whole new uh, uh, form in her life and she's doing what uh, is right for her and we should all be uh, doing that for ourselves as well. Again, I hope some of you will have found this informative. Um, have a good evening.